Not everyone has or needs to have large spaces or even balconies to garden. If you have the heart, you can grow plants anywhere. And if you have a bottle, then you, my friend, have hit a gardening jackpot. Hello everyone, welcome to Urbanscape Bangalore and in this episode, we will look at some top bottle garden tips. So for newbies who have absolutely no clue about what I'm talking about, let me first show you on how to make your own bottle gardens. For this, you need a plant cutting like this and you can start off with pothos or any aeroids like this monstera to kickstart your bottle journey. So these are points on the cuttings called nodes from where roots and leaves come out. From the apex, you need to choose a point below 4 to 5 nodes and cut at a 45 degree angle just below the last node. The 45 degree angle is to increase the area of absorption of the cutting. Now take any glass bottle or even plastic bottle if you want. This process is called upcycling and you can pat yourself on your backs for being an eco crusader at this point. Add water into the bottle till a point just below the rim of the bottle. Add the cutting and keep it in a bright sunny location in your home. So with that sorted, let's look at the top 10 tips. Tip number 1. Water. Here obviously there is no problem of under or over watering because the plant is always in water. Here what you need to do is to remove water once every week so as to reoxygenate the water. You can use normal tap water that is not too hard. If you have a water softener at home, you can use that water as well. So if your area gets enough rain, then collect rainwater to fill your bottle and the plants will love it. Rainwater and distal water is good for your plants because they are bereft of minerals that you find in tap water. But just to keep things simple, use tap water. Tip number two, sunlight. Make sure your plant bottles get ample sunlight to grow really well. So my ideal sunlight conditions would be east, south or the west. Avoid the north as much as possible. Tip number three, fertilizing. You can add around five drops of seaweed solution in a liter of water. Make sure the solution does not look too dark. It should look a little brown like this. Add it in a spray bottle and then spray their leaves. Now this is where foliar spray is needed because the roots are not in soil where the plants will get all its nutrients from. So foliar spray, according to me, is used in such cases whereas soil application is the better option for plants grown in potting media. Don't try soaking the roots in the solution or adding the seaweed in the water itself because it can burn the plant. And I had a bad experience with my water lettuce while doing that. Now to be really honest, I don't do any kind of fertilizing. This is just a best practice if you want to pamper your plants. Tip number four, pruning. You can remove dead or yellowing leaves by using a clean pair of scissors. If the underwater stalk is rotting, then you can cut it off with a scissor cleaned with isopropyl alcohol. Cut it just above the rot to a point where you find a healthy stalk. Don't just cut the rotting part, the rot will continue. Tip number five, washing the bottle. Now keeping the bottle clean is essential to not invite diseases and to prevent algal buildup. You can use an old toothbrush or a bottle brush with soap and clean the bottle and rinse it thoroughly before you add your plant. Tip number six, plant placement. So mostly the plant you would end up growing in such bottles would be the whining varieties. So in such cases, placing it at a height will give you this trailing look because the plant will have more space to grow downwards. If you want the plant to climb, then give it a support like this. Tip number seven, leaf cleaning. Washing leaves is important to unclog the stomata and to allow the free exchange of gas. Tip number eight, pest control. I don't foresee too much of pest problems with plants grown in water because you don't find these tiny pest harvesters in water gardens like you would in soil plants. But you might find some pests like mealybugs once in a blue moon and you can remove it physically or with the help of neem oil pesticide. Tip number 9. Type of bottle. Using a transparent bottle is preferred to check the level of water, root development or any kind of plant rot underwater. 
Now, painting a bottle is also advantageous because the sunlight does not reach the roots and it replicates the normal dark underground conditions the plants are generally found in. But I haven't seen much difference in growth with respect to the level of transparency of the bottles. So you can use either or both in conjunction like I have. And last but not the least, my tip number 10, preventing mosquito breeding. A stagnant water is a mosquito larvae haven and you will have to keep removing the water every week to prevent the spread of dengue. This is something I do very diligently because dengue is not something that you want for yourself, your family or even the society at large. So with this, we have come to the end of yet another episode of Urbanscape Bangalore and I really hope you've enjoyed this particular program. Additionally, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook. The links are given below. Thank you for watching and until we meet again, a very warm goodbye.